Thank, thank you, Derek. Thank, thank you, Speaker yeah. Fighthub. Thank you so much. Good to Coach, see you again. Congratulations on your award for Coach of the Year. You know how excited are you for this fight of this magnitude? Man? I mean, I'm not excited. I can't. You know, something they've been building. Everybody's been talking about it. Asking why this, why that, why this. But now it's here. You know, nothing to say about it. Just go. Let's get it going. I mean, I'm ready to get it going. Ready to get it cracking. I'm ready. You know, it's almost like you're tired of talking about it. Right now, Arrow hasn't fallen over a year. You think that that ring rust could affect his, his abilities a little bit, or he should be ready to go? You know, ring rust, I mean, he's been in the gym. Mm -hmm. Ring rust generally comes when you have uh, a guy who hasn't been in the gym mm -hmm. getting up a second time. But he's not already been working. All right. Uh, I I, you just recently won Trainer of the Year, and congratulations on that. Who are other some of the other trainers you respect in the game? You know what I mean? I like Nacho Berenstein a lot. He's probably like number one for me. I mean, there's a lot of fighters. I mean, Calvin for me. I like a lot of fighters. I mean, trainers. I mean, I mean Eddie Fuss was a great trainer. I mean, so many other fight trainers in the game. Georgie Benton. I mean, there's a lot of them. So it's like. Um, okay. I had a good trainer in Dallas, Taylor August. He's like, you know, it's a lot of different guys inspired. Why not your very thing? Just curious, just because curious, he's, curiosity. Because he's very technical and mm -hmm. teach fundamentals. Very game plan heavy yeah, as well. Right, yeah. Derek, you always been respectful. You always tell your fighters to be respectful. It seems like this fight with uh, Crawford might get a little bit more trash talking than Earl than you, you are um, normally right, used to. Right. That little added motivation, you know, you don't got to go look for it now. It just, it's yeah. there for you guys to go out there and get the work. It's him, man. It's him. You know what I mean? It's like, this is a guy who, if you think about it, your whole career, whatever, mid career, a guy can beat you. And both of them have been told the same thing. So, you know what I'm saying? This is the opportunity for them to really prove who they really are as fighters. So, it's really up to, they really want to fight each other. So, that's the thing about it. And now, this is the opportunity they have to prove that they are the best in boxing and better really pound for pound. I mean, and all the other things above. So it's like, that's what it's about. So, so this fight has been rumored for like a while. Are, are you developing the game plan now or, or you've had this game plan for like a, two, three years I mean, already? Could, nah, man, because, you know, I mean, I think that as a fighter, he may evolve. But for me, it's like I have to be able to evolve with day by day, week by week. So it depends on how I keep seeing it and how I keep changing and keep evolving. I mean, it may, it, I may have something today, but it has to keep evolving and keep going to the something more complete, opposed to these are pieces and bits to make it happen. That's what it's all about. Yeah, now, speaking about there. depth and adaption, um, Crawford switches a lot. How can you prepare for his style without getting too much away? I mean, what I'll say about switching is that whoever changes when something works. No. Okay. <laughs> so, I mean, if it's working, you're not changing from it. That's the killer, man. I mean, I'm just going to make sure you keep switching and changing. <laughs> now, Coach Derek, you talk about, you know, being a trainer is like a third eye in the ring. And, you know, in those couple of instances, like with the Spence with this fight or the Charlo Cassano rematch, you've seen where Spence and Charlo made the adjustments. So being that third eye in the ring, like how important is it to kind of see what's going on and making those adjustments round by round? I had to just be present. You know, my focus is to be present and truly engaged within the fight to where I'm not, like, caught up in what's going on and watching what he's doing. My whole thing is to watch what he's doing, constantly keep watching, constantly keep yelling out, tell him to watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. So I'm talking to him while the fight is going on. Not only in between the rounds, watch this, watch that, he's going to throw this, going to throw that. As you can see kind of how the stance, what he does, whatever. So yeah. Yeah, so you're pretty much like paying attention second yeah, by second. Yeah, you got to be engaged. You have to be truly engaged. If I'm not engaged, I won't see it. Yeah, so there you got to be patient the whole time, like I mean, not listen, even... I gotta be like, man, like really, like, I'm getting older, so I gotta write it down and like, you like, that's what he's doing. That's what. So yeah, you gotta keep, you gotta stay truly engaged. If not, I'm gonna miss it. Derek, a lot of people make a, a lot about the arrow being out um, the whole year. Yeah. But I remember the last fight. You said that um, you told him you know, we got some stuff to work on. That's some stuff you seen in the Ugas last fight. Do you think that gave you all that extra time to prepare? Like that year that was better than taking a, a fight in between, it gave you that extra time to work with Earl to get him where you wanted him to be? Well, you know, really, I would have hoped it would have happened last year, but it didn't. But then, so now it's like really, I think any time you have is more time to be prepared. And so no different than them. I mean, they think that we all have a hypothetical about what we're going to go face, even from him. They think he's been very consistent with what he's been doing. But 
you have to be able to read what he's been doing, so we'll see. We'll see what we'll see what happens. Lastly for me, um, I know you don't probably care about this, but message to them sports betting books that put the line out and got Earl as the underdog. Wish a message cool. to them. Listen, man, I've always been doubted. I've always been looking down. <laughs> I mean, listen, there's nobody on this level who hasn't been doubted. I mean, all the all the way you got all the celebrities that think we're gonna lose and this and listen, man, every one of them have been doubted. So it doesn't bother me what they think. It's just like listen, it's all about you know, I'm all about sticking it to everybody. You know, when we were, what was that, um, in England. There's no different. Everybody told me we're going to lose this Kell Brook. It's okay. It doesn't been doubted. <laughs> it's like, okay, man. Come on. You know, just... Coach, what